Amen. This morning, <clears throat> as we make our way back to our seats, let's get a hymnal. We'll turn to page number 629. Oh, how he loves me. Or oh, how he loves you and me. I'm sorry. Preaching this, Christy Biggs has a special she wants to do for us. Amen.
thy faithfulness. That's very well put. He is so faithful to us, better than what we deserve. I do appreciate you being here this morning at Putnamville Baptist Church. Good to see a couple of visitors with us this morning. Thank you for being here. You are our honored guest. And if there's anything we can do, please let us know. And uh, we want to be a blessing to you this morning. All right. Uh, I, I was preparing for the message this morning, and the Lord spoke to my heart about something. I titled the message, I Shall Not Be Moved. I Shall Not Be Moved. And uh, they say there are two things in this, the, this world that is, are certain. And you know what those two things are, right? Death and taxes. And uh, it's, it's uh, in this world we're living in, we certainly uh, hear a lot about death. And we, sure, we better be sure to pay our taxes, right? And uh, I, uh, I was thinking about this, and I, I can't hardly stand to uh, listen or watch uh, the news anymore. I mean, just the, the wickedness and just uh, what's going on in our, um, the violence, you know, between the violence and the political junk that's on there, uh, man, I tell you what, this, the news isn't worth watching anymore. And uh, I can honestly say that I'm looking forward to that great appearing of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says there in Titus 2.13, this is just a little introduction, but looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Revelation chapter two, uh, 22, verse 20 says this, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. And I'm crying out for the Lord to come, and I'm thinking as this, in these days that we're living in, uh, it could be today. And uh, for the Christian, we have other certainties, though, more than death and taxes. We have uh, one of the certainties that we have is that this is not our home, that we have a home prepared for us. There in John chapter 14, verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I'm looking forward to the Lord's coming. For the Christian, we should be confident in the fact that we're on the winning side. You know, the Bible says this in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Notice these words. It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew. But he himself, and he was clothed in, with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God." And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Folks, we serve an awesome, mighty God. Knowing that God is in control and that heaven is our home, why is there so much fear? Why is there so much doubt? Why is there so much? Why do Christians live in fear today? We have fear of uh, uh, fear and concern of the future. For the future, we have fear and concern of. Uh, the here and now. I mean, with the thoughts of major companies that have uh, are closing their doors and moving uh, to other places or even other countries, uh, jobs were, that were once considered a uh, stable, a good job, are, are now questionable. I realize that our our children are no longer safe in our nation's schools. So, how can we handle the difficult times in which we live? The Bible says this and. It says in Psalm 27, it says in verse 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It goes on down and it says, Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. David had confidence in the God that he served. Christian today, we can have confidence in the God we serve. See, I want us to consider that through difficult times, we don't have to fear. Though these times be 
we see we can have through these times we can have comfort and we can have peace. Some Christians know they only know a fraction of the peace that God intended for us to know. They only know a fraction of it. Troubles and trials are not a new invention. They have been around since sin had came into the world. I mean, you think about it. Life may be hard now, but it has never been easy. Perhaps life in the early days was different, but it was not without difficulty. You think about the children of Israel as they crossed over the Red Sea and the difficult times they had. There was times of troubles and trials throughout all the scriptures you read of them. This morning I want to encourage you that you don't have to, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be moved by what is going on in our country or what is going on in uh, your world right now. It doesn't matter. You don't have to fear. No matter how gloomy things may appear, he will always be in control. He knows exactly what we are going through. I'm going to ask you to join me in Psalm 62 this morning. Psalm 62. The Bible just really spoke to my heart. The Bible, uh, God spoke to my heart about this verse, these verses in the Bible here. I want to read Psalm 62. It says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in his lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, again, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, thank you for the confidence that we have in your word. Lord, I pray that you would just speak to our hearts now as only you can. The Holy Spirit of God, deal with us only you can this morning. If there's one here that's not saved, that today would be the day of salvation. And Lord, I know, I, I know and trust that there may be... Uh, someone here that doesn't know you and the Holy Spirit of God as he moves upon their hearts. Lord, I pray that they would, uh, they would recognize their need for salvation. And Lord, that truly today would be the day of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that comes from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I want you to notice there in verse 6, it says, He only is my rock and my refuge, or my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Folks, with everything that's going on around us, we can have confidence. We can, be, uh, we can look to the Lord as He is our defense. He is our strength. He's our salvation. We don't have to be moved with all these things that are going on around us. Sometimes we need to be reminded that God is eternal and that uh, the principles of His Word are also eternal. And they, they do not change. Even in this ever-changing society, the Word of God never changes. God says, I change not. See, in the Psalms, David presents several principles. And you go through the Psalms, and he presents several principles that we can all learn from and that how he was able to be confident in his God and say these words, I shall not be moved. Again, there in verse 6, it says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I'm going to look at just three reasons why we shall not be uh, moved. Number one, because my salvation is from God. My salvation is from God. Look there in verse 1, it says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God from him cometh my salvation. And throughout the scriptures there, again in verse 6, it says this, he only is my rock and my salvation. Verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory. Folks, we don't have to fear. We don't have to be moved. Why? Because God is our salvation. 
Psalm 127 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Folks, we don't have to be worried about anything today because He is our salvation. Psalm 118 verse 14 says this, The Lord is my strength and my song is become my salvation. See, this is foundational for the Christian. We must believe that salvation comes from Him and Him alone. It's not something that we can do. It's all about what He has done there on Calvary. And Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You see, salvation was purchased by God. It was purchased by God there in in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which, uh, uh, which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. He has purchased with his own blood. There in 1 Corinthians 6, 20 it says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Folks, we do not, if you're a Christian today, hey, you don't belong to yourself. You've been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you belong to Him. God paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, for you and I. On Our salvation was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else but the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, I, I, uh, we aren't co-signers to this. He bought us. The other day I bought a, uh, traded in my truck and I had a co-signer and that co-signer was my wife and although she's a co-signer, that's not her truck, it's mine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Listen, God purchased us. We aren't co-signers to that. He is the purchaser and we belong to Him. Not only was God uh, salvation purchased by God, but salvation was provided by God. There in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God provided the only way to salvation. I've talked to people and they say, I, I, talk, I remember one in particular, it was a man that I used to work with at Great Dane, and he said, uh, he says, well, uh, he called me preacher. He says, well, I believe that we're, life is like uh, spokes on a wheel. And God is in the center of that, and there's many spokes that gets to him. And I said, oh no, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him, through the Lord Jesus Christ. There isn't any other way. There's not many spokes on a wheel. There's only one way, and Jesus Christ is that way. God purchased salvation, and because of salvation belongs to him, he has provided it for us. But then I want you to notice also that salvation is promised by God there in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Since uh, sin came into the world, God promised that he would purchase us and provide salvation for us. Genesis 3.15, it says, And I will put enmity between thee and thy seed and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's that's foretelling of what Christ was going to do when he died on the cross, that he bruised, he he stomped on the head of the serpent. And listen to me, and Jesus' heels were bruised. That's what that's telling us about there. So salvation was purchased by God. It was uh, paid for by God. It was, it was promised by God. But then I see salvation is protected by God. Aren't you glad that you aren't the one holding salvation in your hands? I don't hold salvation. I can't because I would lose it. I'm not responsible enough, but God says in John chapter 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and, I, and they follow me, and I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man. Did you catch that? Any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man, no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. 
Folks say, I don't care. There's some believe, there's some that believe that you can lose your salvation. But listen to me. If it was yours, you could lose it. But since it's his, you can't lose your salvation. Your salvation belongs to him, and he holds you in his hands. Salvation is protected by God. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do with me. Folks, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear what men will do unto us. Why? Because the Lord, he's the protector of our salvation. One old boy, one preacher, I can't remember which one it was now. He says uh, he was threatened with death, and he says, you can't threaten me with heaven. You can't threaten me with heaven. Folks, you know what the, you don't think about this, you know what the alternative to live in here is for the Christian. We get to go to heaven. Now they may, that may not do anything for you, but it does something for me, knowing that heaven's my home. I'm not. I don't have hell prepared for me. I have heaven prepared for me, and I'm looking forward to that. David had confidence in the Lord because he knew that his salvation was in the Lord. We must have an anchor that is steadfast and sure in the midst of the storms of life. Folks, if we can't anchor on to the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, let me, should, let me tell you that if you have your anchor in anything else, it's going to fail you. James tells us that we do not know what tomorrow will bring. None of us have any idea what may be just around the corner. Now, I don't say that to cause us to be afraid or to worry of the uncertainties of life, I say that knowing that I'm confident that no matter what happens around the corner, my confidence is in my salvation, which comes from the Lord. Assurance of salvation is vital. Let me share with you something, folks. If you don't know for sure, if you don't know that heaven's your home for sure, I couldn't pillow my head at night. The songwriter put it this way, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. David knew he was saved. That was how he was able to say, uh, say uh, I shall not be moved. He is my salvation. He's uh, my rock and my salvation. I shall not be moved. That's how he could say that. The Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Folks, more than I know that my name is uh, Pastor Rick Brown, more than I know that, my, I know that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You see, our, our relationship with God needs to be a reality. Either we have a personal relationship with Him or we don't. Salvation is both fact and by faith. Fact, Christ died for the ungodly. Faith, all who believe shall be saved. One of the reasons people are so fearful in this life is that they lack the assurance of personal relationship with God. They lack that assurance. They don't realize it. They don't, they, don't, they don't have that confidence. The Apostle Paul could deal with the hardships that he faced. And man, I tell you, he faced some great difficulties in his life during his ministry because he had this assurance. In 1 Timothy 1.12 he says this, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You know what he was saying there? He says, I'm not worried about any, anything that comes my way. Why? Because my faith and my confidence is in the God that I serve. See, we can have assurance today. We can have confidence today. I will not be moved. Why? Because the Lord is my salvation. He's my rock and my salvation. I shall not be moved. Why do we have to fear? Then number two, I want you to notice this. Because my strength is in God. I've told you this many times, but I can't do anything on my own. I, I, yesterday I worked and I was out in the hot sun yesterday and I came home and I just went to bed. Now, this is the first time this has happened in a long time. But I was just wore out. I can tell you what, I was able to make it through the day just because of his strength that he's given me. The Bible says he's my rock and my salvation. He's my defense. I shall not be moved. You catch hold of that. 
He says, he's my rock and my salvation. He's our strength. He's the one that we depend on. We can't do it ourselves. Psalm 27 says this, The Lord is my strength of, of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. He is my rock. He is my salvation. Psalm 118, 14 says, The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. I know this. Listen, I can testify of this because of my past. God has never forsaken me. He's never let me down. He has always protected me. He has always provided strength for me and security in times of need. He always has been there for me. David remembered his experiences with Goliath. He remembered before he went to battle with Goliath, he remembered there was a lion that came across his way. You know what? That was setting him up for another feat, another battle ahead. He knew that because there was a bear that came his way. And David was able to destroy the bear, not because of his strength or his might, but because of God. Folks, if we have any victories in this life, it's not because of how good we are or how smart we are or how strong we are or how biblically sound we are. It's because of God. He's worthy of our praise. It's because of my past, what He's done for me in the past. Matthew 19, 26 says, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And I've seen, I've witnessed God do some impossible things in my life. And each one of us could probably go around the room and testify of some impossible things that God has accomplished in our lives. Can I get an amen there? We all can say, God has been done this and I didn't know how it was going to happen. I just know God did it. I know this because of my past, but also I know this because of His presence. Again, God has always been there with me. I remember times in my life I was really, I, I was afraid. Then I remember the Lord is with me and his peace, his, his peace flooded my soul. That's why that verse there in Philippians 4, 6 and 7 means so much to me. Because God is the God of peace and he's the one that gives us that peace and that passes all understanding. The three Huber boys had confidence in his security because they knew that God was right there with them. Let me ask you, what giant may be put in your path today? What giant is in you? Is it a, is it a physical problem? Is it a physical giant? Is it a, is it a spiritual giant? Is it a, is it a mental giant? Is, is it an emotional? Is it a financial giant? I don't know what giant's in your way today, but can I tell you, God is a God of impossibilities. What is it that seems too big to overcome? Have confidence in God. Trust in Him. Do not be afraid. But then, not only because of my past and His presence, but also because of His promises. I can have confidence that He's my strength. Why? Because of His promises. He said, therefore, He said it, therefore, I can trust it. You, you know something? This is more than just a bunch of do's and don'ts. This is God's love letter to us. And God has some many wonderful promises that He has given to us. That we as Christians, we can lay our faith and our confidence in this very word. If God said it, whether you believe it or not, it's true. We can have confidence in that. Psalm 112, 7 8 says, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. This is not the power of positive thinking. It isn't about gathering up loads of self confidence. This is about trusting in the promises of God, trusting in Him. And a God with whom we have a personal relationship with. You know, the God that I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning this morning, and I woke up and I started praying and thanking God and just and revealing my heart to Him this morning. At 3 o'clock in the morning. You know what? He didn't say, go to bed. He didn't say, hey, uh, bother me in the morning with those things. No, He was there with a open ears, willing to listen, wanting to hear from His child. 
Psalm 118, verse 8, it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Because of our salvation is in him and our security is with him, then that provides a song to God. He's become our song. There in and uh, the whole, all the psalms there, they're, they're, they're songs singing out. As, and I wish I was musically talented like some of you in here. But uh, I started listening to Miss Christie play uh, the piano. And I thought, oh, how beautiful. I could just imagine that's what it sounds like in heaven. Just the, the heaven's bells ringing. And I, I could just imagine how beautiful that is in heaven. And I, I wish I could put to song or to, I guess, the, uh, to piano or I don't know how you do it, but uh, to melody, I guess, is the word I'm looking for, the psalms. And you could just sing those psalms unto the God. That's what they did. That's what David did here. He's, uh, he's singing out, Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from whom cometh my salvation. It's a song unto God. And, and uh, Psalm 27, verse 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up upon mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Psalm 118, 14 says, The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. It should be a song of praise, folks. For all that God has done for us, we should have a song in our hearts. A song, I tell you, I'm not musically inclined at all, but there's always a song in my heart of praise. Worship should be a part of our life. We need to realize that worship is not just something that is done on one day a week, but it's something that we experience, something that's part of our lives. It's, it's a joy in our soul. David said it was his first priority. His first priority was to dwell or to remain in the presence of God. That's what that means. And I tell you, when you're in the presence of God, there's joy and there's a song in your heart. To be where God is, is to dwell in His house. What is our number one desire? No wonder David was referred to as a man after God's own heart. There in Psalm 27, 5, it says, For in the time of my trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Hey, folks, he has a song in his heart. He's singing praises unto God for all that God has done for him. When I began to sink in the deep and into the mire of, of sin and problems, I want to be able to call out to Him, knowing that He is near. To have confidence that He will reach down and lift me up and set my feet upon a solid rock. There in Psalm 31, it says, I will extol Thee, O Lord, for Thou hast lifted me up and hast not made mine foes to rejoice over me. Psalm verse 40, verse 2 says, He brought me up also out of the, of the horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon the rock, uh, a rock and established my goings. There's, there in verse 6 of chapter 20, or Psalm 27, it says, Offer a sacrifice of joy. What that literally means is, I will shout with joy or loudly shout the battle cry. We need to sing praises unto the Lord, which literally means to lift up your voices in honor and praise unto God. But then I want you to notice that our, sing, our song should be publicized. Let it be known to others. And we don't, you know, some of us walk around and we walk around like our, someone just killed our dog. We walk around with our heads bowed down and in defeat and discouraged. Folks, I believe that Christians ought to rejoice. That'll be, they ought to have a, have a joy that is, that is overwhelming. I mean, I'm telling you, we ought to be excited about the things that come. This is, this is the only heaven that the lost will ever know. And this, this, think about this, this is the only hell that we'll ever experience as Christians. 
Psalm 107 verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Folks, if you're saved, it's not something to be uh, ashamed of. It's something we need to rejoice in and let people know, hey, God has saved me. There's no promise that we will not have to face difficulties. But we can rest upon the principles and from His Word. Our salvation is from God. Our security is in the Lord. And our song is to the Lord. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I shall not be moved. I'm not going to be moved. Why? Because my salvation is in God. My salvation, my security is in the Lord. And my song to the Lord. I'm not going to be moved. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed as Miss Haley begins to prepare for our invitation. I'm going to ask you to search your heart this morning. Search your heart. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I don't know for sure if I was to die today. I don't know for sure that i go to heaven. Pastor, that's me. Would you pray for me? Anyone like that? I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to search you out. I'm not going to come get you. Pray for me. Anyone like that? Maybe you hear and you say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I'm not living the victorious Christian life. I don't have that joy that you're talking about. I don't have that confidence. Pray for me, Pastor. Anyone like that? I'm going to encourage you to find a place at the altar as the Lord has spoke to your heart. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, you know each heart. You know each situation. God, I pray that you would speak to hearts, and Lord, that you would move as only you can. Lord, as men and women, boys and girls, find a place at the altar, Lord, I pray that you would just deal with them, Lord, that they would, Lord, turn from their sins, and Lord, that they would have their confidence in you, not in something that they've done or what they can do, but only in what you've done. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do. We'll give you all the praise and the glory and the honor that comes from it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you stand to your feet? Miss Haley is going to begin playing softly. God has spoke to your heart. Won't you come on this first verse? God has spoke to you. Won't you come? God is my salvation. He's my strength and he's my song. just a few announcements as the men come forward for our morning offering. If you're visiting with us, if you would put mind putting that visitor's card in our offering plate, just so we may have a record of your attendance. Appreciate you being here again. I want to just give you a couple uh, upcoming events tonight. Right after our services, we'll be having a business meeting right after the PM services tonight. Then after that, we're going to be having a uh, going away party for the, the walkers. We appreciate what they've done. Uh, how much of a blessing they've been for our, to our church. And so you come and rejoice with them as the Lord's got 
uh, has moved them to uh, Reno, Nevada. And uh, just pray for them that the Lord will continue to work in their lives and their ministries. And then uh, the next week, the 23rd, is a teen service. And then on July the 30th in the AM service, we'll have the Lord's Supper. We'll have a, um, a dinner on the grounds and then a short afternoon service. No PM service on the 30th. And then August the 5th, there's a church fellowship. We'll have a uh, from 5 to 8, we're just going to have another fun day here at the church and just a time of fellowship. And then I want to say happy birthday to uh, Brother Ed Buchanan. Uh, Brother Ed Buchanan, happy birthday to you, sir, you, this, this week. And then also Peyton Lovejoy has a birthday this week, so happy birthday to him. Happy anniversary to Mike and Sherry Brooks. And, uh, and then also Brother Kenny and Miss Judy Duke have an anniversary this week, so happy anniversary to you all as well. Uh, our missionary of the week, Brother Greg and Miss Linda Waller. Our Deacon of the Week, Brother Danny Lovejoy. Our Family of the Week, Brother Tony and Miss Lisa Drury. And then our Trustee of the Week, Brother Jack Schaus. And uh, we appreciate these folks. You remember them in your prayers. All right, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Eli, sir, would you please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for getting us all here safely this morning. Thank you for giving Pastor the words to say this morning. Help us to apply it to our daily lives. Please give uh, them the words to say tonight. And please bless the gift and can give her a soft drink and just never ask him. get a message from uh, Miss Judith uh, McGinnis. We've been praying for her, uh, but she wants this to be said. Uh, so uh, she wants to let the church know she appreciates your prayers. And uh, the cancer has returned and spread. Uh, treatment begins July the 24th. And uh, prayers and phone calls are appreciated. Uh, so, and she wanted to say thank you to everyone that's been praying and all that you've done so far. So I would ask that you would remember Miss Judith in your prayers. Uh, the cancer has spread. Um, I don't know all the details, but would ask that you, very uh, great need of, of prayer right now. Pray for the McGinnis family in this time, uh, for Brother Sean and Miss Kimberly and the, uh, the, the grandchildren, but also for Stu. And uh, remember those folks in your prayers, if you would. I know they would greatly appreciate that. Let's all stand and we'll close in a word of prayer. And uh, uh, Brother Travis, I'm going to ask you to close. And please remember Miss Judith in your closing prayer. This morning, Lord, help us to not have fear in our hearts as we, as we walk this earth and we serve you. Help us to be obedient to you, to walk in your ways. And Lord, this morning we do thank you, Miss Judith. We pray, Father, that you would... Comfort her, Lord, give her strength, uh, help her not to be afraid, Father, and help the family to uh, just, just comfort them and be with them. Father, if it be your will, we ask that you would uh, well her up and so that she could come back. And Father, we thank you for each and every person here this morning. Pray that you go with us, bring us back at the appointed time. In your name we pray.